Hello folks, this is a build video for a 1 meter wingspan flying wing for ripping around FPV. Um, and I start by cutting out the basic uh, outline of the wing halves and I've made these little wrap around aluminium uh, brackets to help get a nice vertical cut just to cut out the basic shape. The aluminium is very thin and flexible. I think it's window flashing or something like that. Uh, but it's the same stuff that I use for cutting out the actual airfoil templates and can easily be cut with a pair of scissors. The wing cord at the centre is 250 millimetres, tapering down to 210 millimetres at the tips. And I have a 22.5 degree angle. Uh, for each wing half at the nose. Now I'm marking uh, where the leading edge and trailing edge line up on the inner airfoil and just pinning the template into place. And for the tip airfoil I'm going to have a little bit of washout which means the, the trailing edge uh, angles up a little bit compared to the inner airfoil. In theory this reduces adverse yaw and maybe uh, reduces tip stalling too. When you're cutting a tapered wing you need to have different cutting speeds for the inner and outer airfoils uh, so that you start and finish at the same time. So you sort of need to slow down the cutting speed uh, at the tip end. It takes a little bit of practice to get the speeds right, but it's not too difficult. You can also put marks on the foam to uh, make sure you're passing the halfway and three quarter marks at the same time. I always deliberately make my templates extend out at the trailing edge a little bit. It helps uh, to have a bit of a, a lead in for the cutting and you can then trim off the trailing edge to the uh, correct dimensions. So I've sanded down the imperfections and now it's time to cover it with packing tape. Now I'm joining the two wing halves together with a five minute epoxy and initially I didn't put uh, any spars in this wing uh, and that was quite alright but after a decent crash into a fence uh, it um, broke away along this join so I think it's probably a good idea to uh, span that join with a carbon ribbon spar or something like that. Here I'm taping over the join top and bottom just to make sure it um, cures or lined up properly and weighting it down while it dries. I'm cutting out quite large ailerons, 50mm uh, tapering down to about 40mm at the outer edge, just uh, freeing up the ends and then half cutting through for the hinge. and I'm using 3M Blenderm tape to create the hinge. And I'm putting another layer of packing tape over the top of the hinge for a bit more strength and durability. I've glued on some uh, scrap EPP which is nice and tough and flexible for the uh, winglets on the tips. And later on I actually made these a little bit bigger because the wing was waggling around a bit too much. I'm using a ruler here to get the finishing tape right into that uh, corner there 
and adding a little bit of uh, cloth reinforcing tape to the outer tip uh, which will cop a fair bit of abuse. Using the usual experimental airline style ID card plastic control horns. Cut a little slot there. And the control horns bent over at 90 degrees and passed through the aileron and hot glued and taped into position. Now I'm marking out where the servo will sit and cutting out a little recess for it to bury down into the wing. Now I'm clipping off the little mounting lugs uh, on the servo, which we don't need, they just get in the way. Doing a little test fit, that's looking good. Using a servo tester to center up the servo arm before connecting it to the control horn. I do need a little servo extension for this uh, setup, so I, before burying it in the wing I make sure I tape the uh, connection together so it doesn't pop apart. Now I'm just cutting a little channel in the foam to um, uh, recess the servo lead into. And I've poked a hole in the wing so that I could pass the servo lead down underneath uh, into the fuselage that I'm going to use. Taping it over just to make it all nice and flush. Hold it in position. Clipping the push rod to the right length. Hot gluing the servo into position. Just a little bit of hot glue so I can pull it out easily if I need to. A bit more reinforcing tape over the servo for a bit more strength. The push rod length is just roughly set at this stage. I'll need to adjust that later on. And there's the aileron all finished. For the initial test flights I'm just going to use my existing wing fuselage and rubber band it on. So I just need a bit of protection over the leading and trailing edge so that the rubber bands don't bite in too much. And once this is done we can go for a flight. There's my little removable FPV pod which I decided to take off for the first few flights. And I found that with the CG back a little bit uh, and the throws at full rates it was almost uncontrollable. A real handful. So I had to move the battery forward a little bit calm down the throws and started flying really nicely. It has an amazing glide slope. And it works really well for close in, ripping around FPV, shooting gaps, doing a few aerobatics. Apart from loops, it's having problems stalling out of a loop, as I'll show you a bit later on, but um, smooth flying, fast flying, shooting gaps, good fun. It rolls easily and fast. You can see what I mean by the rolls, they're lots of fun, but try and do a loop without full power and it stalls and it's unrecoverable once it gets into a stall. And this is a stall after a downwind turn on in a fair bit of wind. I think the Sipkill airfoil is designed as a, a slope combat airfoil, so maybe it doesn't handle the extra wing loading of uh, motor, battery and FPV gear. Anyway, the experiment continues.